Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Michael Esposito Podcast Show. This is my second episode, and it is kind of an emergency episode. It's I'm filming it because I have a guest interview today who is doing a really great act of kindness, and I want to share it as soon as possible, and he had some time available today to be able to do a Instagram Live with me and do this podcast, so I said, let's just jump on it, and we're going to be calling him in about five minutes. Guy is on. I'm going to call him right now. All right. How are you? Hey, man. What's going on, bro? All right. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. So I have in my background right now, I think you can see it on my face, on my Instagram live. I have your website up, pulled up your Instagram, but let me do a quick introduction for, for the podcast. And we're just going to start it up right now. Why not? Right? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Everybody, welcome to the Michael Esposito podcast show. We are live right now on Instagram and I am interviewing Guy Stanley Falosh. Guy Stanley Falosh and I met back in 2010. We met when Haiti experienced the worst worst earthquake that ever and uh, devastated the country. And Guy stepped up and helped our non for profit and and helped us tremendously uh, in terms of getting some PR recognition, volunteering, and donations. He's also Haitian and. Um, I just was scrolling on Facebook on all the people that are helping everybody out with what's going on today, and I saw on Guy's Facebook page that he is doing something really great for his artist community. I, I'd like to welcome Guy. Guy, can can you say a few words as to what's going on down in New York City and what you're you're up to? Hey, man, what's going on, man? It's been a while. Uh, yeah, New York City is pretty much going on lockdown um, slowly, and I have a lot of friends are... are, are um, struggling and um who are artists and who are painters and everything like that and you know i've been a painter for 20 years and new york's been really really good to me you know and as an artist i feel like i have to do do my part man you know um not just i'm just a painter i'm also an avid art collector so i'm trying to do my part man so i'm basically making a call send out messages right now to everybody hey listen i'm looking to buy as much art as possible uh and what i mean by that i'm not trying to say that you know if your paintings sell for 20 or 30 thousand dollars i'm trying to buy a 30 thousand dollar painting i'm not saying that at all i'm not I, I last thing i want you people last thing i want artists to do is devalue the work you know, what I'm trying to say is, like, if you have a little, if you have a really cool little small painting, a little doodle, if you're an art teacher and you're out of work right now and you paint on the side, um, if you have something small and kind of cool that I like, I'm putting the word out there, man. You know, I'm looking to buy. You know, um, I have an amazing dealer. Uh, I have an amazing gallery that represents me. And the year, we had a great year. So I just want, you know, I had an opportunity to go and buy a Rolex. So buy a Rolex, I'm buying art. That's that's pretty awesome. I, out, <laughs> I mean, not not many people have an opportunity like you do to be able to to buy a Rolex and uh, <laughs> and and then decide, you know what, I'm going to just donate that. So, I mean, you know, we we all deserve nice things and I, I don't think that should be overshadowed. And right. you you put in you put in a lot of work. I mean, when we first met over over 10 years ago, um, you know, I didn't even know who you are. And then uh, we, we hooked up and I started following you on, on Facebook. And then, of course, Instagram came up and started seeing your artwork. And I mean, you really do some great work. Can you speak a little bit about some of the art that you do? Um, yeah, you yeah. know, listen, you know, I not, not I don't necessarily want to talk about me. I want to mostly talk about the people out there. You know, I have friends. I have friends who are, you know, who are have kids. Um, like I said, lost their job. You know, they were they were a waiter slash artist, and right now I just really want to just put the word out there and just put the work. You know, and say, listen, dude, I know two hundred dollars is not a lot of money, but maybe you could buy groceries for a week. Maybe maybe it'll help put you know um, buy diapers, um, or buy or baby food. You know, uh, and I'm I'm just just want to do my part. Man. I'm not a doctor. I can't save lives, but I make art. And I want to just, again, do my small little part, man. 
Yeah, I mean, and and that's that's I think one of the most amazing things that's coming out of all of this. I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of stores closing, we're seeing a lot of businesses closing, uh, hearing about a lot of layoffs. But I'm in text groups um, between my basketball friends and and uh, the chamber and everything, where we are making sure that we're buying gift cards for some of our local businesses for the people that we're trying to support. Um, I, I got off the phone with with one of my insurance clients who's worried about people losing and people uh, vandalizing, making sure that she's covered. So th- this is a crazy time. Can you speak to us about the climate in New York City? Just for context, I'm in upstate New York, which is about 80 miles north of New York City, which is, a, 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 I'm assuming, a little bit of a different environment. You guys went on lockdown first. Um, can yeah. you speak a, speak about the uh, environment down there and what it's like? Yeah, yeah. As you, you, know, as you, can, as you see on the news, man, you know, I'm on the Upper East Side, you know, a little further up. On, uh, and, you know, grocery stores are... The shelves are empty. I've been in New York 20 years. I've never seen grocery store shelves empty. Um, um, closed stores are closing. You know, barbershops are closing. Uh, my gym closed. And not just that, my gym fired everybody, the whole entire staff, you know? Wow. So people people are panicking, you know? But the last thing people need to do, the last thing people should not do is panic, you know? And not just that, don't, the worst thing you could do is like hoarder your money. Let's keep the economy going by going out and spending and and buying shit. Because I, I lost you for a second. Yeah, sorry. You you want to keep you you, you want to keep the economy going by going out and buying groceries and you know buying buying an Xbox if you're bored. You know, <laughs> just don't hoard stuff because that's the worst thing you could do right now. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I saw a, a funny uh, quote from somebody. They were they were at the Dollar General and uh, they saw somebody with a shopping bin full of hand sanitizer and everything and, and wipes and, and everything. And they were like, uh, why are you hoarding all that? And the guy was like, can I just put this back on the shelf, please? Because he was actually stocking the shelves. But anyway... Um, yeah, the people that are hoarding this stuff, it's it's really not helping the people that need it. And and that's a sad part in all of this is that we're seeing the shelves are emptied and it's like one person is getting all of this stuff when meanwhile if we just can leave it on the shelves, it's going to help everybody else out. Just take what you need, buy what you need and then let let the shelves replenish so that everybody can get a yeah. little bit of it. Exactly. You know, and it, it's because what happens is it becomes a domino effect, you know, and 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 you you don't want that domino effect to happen, you know. And and let's let's be honest, we live in New York apartments. How much toilet paper do you need, man? Where are you storing all that stuff? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So no, that that's probably the craziest thing I heard is all the hoarding of the toilet paper. I mean, you know, your your mentality in all of this is is not new to me because I remember when we first met, which was at the forty forty club in New York City, yeah. um, for the the town hall for the earthquake in Haiti, and uh, you you stood up, and I remember vividly when everybody was saying we need to uh, send over this, send over that, and you stood up and you were like, listen, these people need candles, these people need matches. You were one of the the first voices of reason, and that's how we all right. connected was because we were like, yeah, wait a second, yeah. we're all on the same page here. Like yeah, we, yeah, exactly, that, that's exactly you know? it. And when, and, and when that happened in Haiti, you know, when that happened, when the earthquake happened in Haiti, you know, I'm glad everyone stepped up, but like, you know, they wanted to go parties and don't, and do have fundraisers. I'm like, listen, now's not time to go parties, man. Now it's time to like, you know, step up and like go buy diapers, you know, let's, you know, I, I'll, I'll pick everything up. You know, I, I, I was very lucky at the time as well too, where I could rent a U-Haul for a month and just, store it and, and just make my rounds and picking up um, deliveries for everybody. So yeah, it's just, now's the time to like, everyone needs to step up, you know, as a New Yorker, we, 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 we get through things together. Yeah, and you yeah. know something that I'm doing is uh, is ha- trying to highlight all the local businesses in my area, trying to get them to fill up our news feed. And I think what what you're doing, you know, we, you know, I'm I'm in the business world, and I, I deal with with uh, mostly brick and mortar businesses and everything. But you're in the artist world, and you're dealing with yeah. artists, and you're bringing something new to the table that I didn't even think about with your offering of buying uh, people's art for two hundred dollars or for up to two hundred dollars. Um, can you speak about like some of the art that you're you're looking to get? I know you mentioned some doodles and sculptures but can you speak yeah, about like what that kind of art looks as, like as of now i already spent a thousand dollars right you know within you know uh within 10 minutes you know so i'm literally like I'm, my dm is just getting filled with a bunch of bunch of art as of now you know, i already spent a thousand dollars uh and i'm going to keep spending as much as possible you know 
Uh, I'm looking just for talent. I'm just looking for talented stuff, stuff that I love, stuff that you know that I would love to see it hanging in my uh, in my apartment. You know, I've been I've been collector for 20 years, and um, I have friends. I have, art, I have artist friends who get uh, 1.2 million dollars for a painting. I have friends who haven't got you know who never had the big break yet. You know. So I like to support my friends who haven't got their big break yet. And right now I'm just looking for like cool little stuff, man. Speaking about the big break and, and some of these people that you're talking about that are just starting out, what is it like to be a struggling artist? Can you paint that picture for people that, that don't um, necessarily well, know? Listen, being an artist in New York City right now is something I don't recommend to my worst enemy. You know, it's not, it's, you know, people have this romantic notion about how sexy and cool and this romantic notion about it. But, you know, when you get that call to be an artist, you know, you, it's like breathing. You have to do it, you know? So, and, and selling, that's just, that's just, uh, uh, it's just a little bonus part of it. You know, when you get that call to be an artist, you, you, you get the call, you know? But listen, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been grinding for a long time. This Honestly, this wouldn't be possible if I didn't have amazing collectors that've been so that've been supporting me for the past twenty years, and I didn't, and this wouldn't be happening if I didn't have an amazing gallery that believed in me and believed my work, you know. So it's like it's everything's coming full circle, man, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, for my my background in philanthropy is that you know I was I was raised in a household where my parents started an organization, Forgotten Children of Haiti, a non for profit to to help children in Haiti, and uh, from 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 a very young age, I had uh, people around me who were always volunteering their time, volunteering, um, giving don donating their money, donating their 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 clothes, their food, and everything. So I saw that, and I was raised with that around me, and and that's why. I'm, I carry that on in my life today. With with you, um, where where did you learn your phila- philanthropy? Where did you see that? How did, when was the first time that you started seeing people giving like the way that you give? Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you just it's just it's just human nature, man. You know what I mean? I know that I didn't I I know that I didn't want to have someone breathing down my neck. You know, in an office, I wasn't built for a suit and tie. I wasn't built for a nine to five. But at the same time, though, I knew that I wanted to be my own boss. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I did my time, and you know, I grind, moved to New York after after graduate school, and just pursued the dream. You know, and but at the same time, though, I surround myself with amazing, amazing, smart, talented people, and you learn from them. You know, you're always learning. You know, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is like, you know, once you stop learning and evolving, that's when that's when things uh, fall apart. There you go. How's it going, man? Well, Good, bro. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, wait a minute. There's no way we can, like, you know, do this. <laughs> for, for, those, for those who are listening right now, we, we were on Instagram Live, and we just figured out how to be able to, to yeah. share each other's screens <laughs> and see each other. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, guy, it's. I, mean, I think social media is amazing because I mean, you and I haven't shaken hands physically in like probably five or seven years, but right. seeing you, but I see you all the time on on uh, in, on Instagram and on social media. So I feel like I feel like I've been we've been shaking hands since yesterday. But um, right, right. Oh, uh, I just wave it. But uh, yeah, it's it's something something's loading. But um, going back to the whole um, you giving away or you purchasing uh, two hundred dollars worth of other people's art, um, have you? Did, have is that something that you've seen in the artist community before? Is that something that um, that that is no, normal? No, it, it's 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 not though. You know, it, it's not something um, that you see typically. You're saying. Um, no, it's it's one of those things where it's one of those things. Believe it or not, um, no, no, no. Um, I have a philosophy. I have a philosophy that I live by. You know, uh, my philosophy is is um, every time I sell a painting, I buy a painting. You know, and I, I had that philosophy for twenty years. Uh, like I said, I've been avid art collector. I've been avid art collector for a long time. There you go. Uh, I've been I've been collecting for a long time, and it's just again, it's just my it's just my little small way of just like doing my part and trying to help out and and um, getting the word out there, man. You know, what I mean, um, I just don't want people to forget about you know about the arts, you know, because one of my biggest problems is um, arts is always the first thing that gets cut in schools. You know, what I mean, it's like 
basketball is more important. And you learn how to dribble a ball is more important than learn how to play piano or learn how you know um, learning how like uh, uh, draw or paint. You know what I mean? And I don't believe that's true. You know what I mean? And I, and it really irks me when I when I go and see that the arts are always the first thing to get cut on the cutting block. You know, arts important too, man. You know what I mean? Arts very very important. You know right. and. Again, this is just my small little part. This is my small little way of just trying to help out and stepping up, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, for we, we have it seems like a lot of people are joining right now, so I almost kind of yeah. just want to refresh the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we definitely um, right now, I'm I'm on with with guy Stanley Filosh, who is a local. Actually, it's Filosh, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, who's a, who's a local artist in New York City, and and he he is right now ma- starting an initiative for himself where he's purchasing up to about $200 worth of, of local art for, for local artists. He, he wants you to DM him any pictures or any type of art that you have. He's looking to, to, to add to his personal collection. And I mean, I think that's just really something great that you're doing right now. Um, if, if anything, it's keeping the lights on for some of these local artists or for these small time artists. It's not even that though. It's, 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 Buying, again, it's buying diapers. It's uh, it's buying you know a week's worth of groceries. You know what I mean? Like we, I don't want people to panic. You know, it's not panic. And the last thing people need to do is like hoarder money, hoarder food, hoarder uh, the bare uh, accessories. You know, we don't want people to do that. You know, and what I really want to do is just like listen, man. You know, New York's been good to me. You know, I'm out here. You know, thanks to my gallery, uh, all my amazing collectors. You know, I had an opportunity to, like, try and step up, you know, um, and it was either buy a Rolex or, you know, let's, let's step up. You know, you know? <laughs> you know, all right, so so we, we talked a little bit before we got on this call together, and you mentioned the Rolex right. thing, and I was like, man, that's crazy, like, that's that's pretty awesome. Can you, can you, because I, I'm, a lot of us who are listening right now and who are, who are you know, paying attention to this right now, to you saying that, don't even understand right. that thought process. Um I mean, you were ready to buy yourself something that, like you said, it was a was a reward for all the hard work and time that you put in, all the years of of hustling and everything. And then you just decided, I'm not going to do that. Can you, like, when did that when that switch? Can you just give us like that moment that that switch hit that you were just like, I'm not um, buying a Rolex. No, it, it was just one of those things where, like, you know, uh, again, you know, I had a great couple months with my gallery, and we sold a bunch of stuff, and and and, and it was something that I've always want it and save for you know right. and my buddy called me the other day and he's an artist he has three kids and you know he just got laid off from school and you know i know he paints too and I was, and he was just like yo i don't know what i'm gonna do i was like oh well dude what, what do you have available in your studio and he was just like what do you mean i was like let me buy something he's like oh i can't tell you anything i was like dude listen stop you know show me something and he showed me something and i bought a painting and that's when a light bulb you right, know, kind of clicks. You know, that was my Oprah aha moment. It hit so home. Like, let me let me step up, and you know what? I have I have a couple of dollars. You know, so let me step up and see if I can do that. So right now, I'm in my studio. I put out the call, and I was like, "Hey, listen, dude. You know, I'm not one of the biggest art collectors in there. You know, I'm not one of the biggest art collectors in the game. But like, you know, if you have some really cool pieces, something small, something kind of cool that I like, DM me. If I buy." It, you know, I'm, you know, I'm buying artwork for $200, man. So, yeah. yeah. Now, I think, you know, like that, that light bulb that you're talking about, it kind of hit me the other day. And that's when I just decided to to hit the ground running with my podcast. Like it's it's yeah. kind of the same thing like this, this epidemic, this virus, this what's going on around us. And like you've talked about this before, this mass hysteria, this this panic that's happening all around us is is a, is a moment in our time as for all of us to step up and, and do something like for me, I'm seeing in our local area, a lot of businesses are shutting down and everything. And I'm just like, I, I want to promote the hell out of them. Like, like when I saw sure. your post, I was like, I want to promote the hell out of this for the local artists. I just want to market the hell out of people so that business can sustain. Um, I spoke about it in my other podcast recently where I was just like saying, you know, it, we main street, if main street has, um, you know, if you're a restaurant and Main Street has 10 restaurants on it, it's restaurant row, and that's going right. to draw people to your restaurant. So you need those other nine restaurants to be successful in order for you to yeah. be successful. And it's the same yeah. in our business community. And, and as you're so showing us in the artist community, it's the same thing is that you're going to help other artists 
succeed. And that, that only helps, that helps you, that helps everybody. And like you said, it keeps the arts alive. Like even in these terrible times and these times where people are depressed, people are losing their job, people are, are, are not earning an income right now. It, it's it, at least you're, you're the shining light that that's showing them a, a new way. And, yeah, and art you know, is, and, does and that. I, even, even if I was, if, you know, if I was even, if I was a restaurant owner, dude, you know, it's about thinking outside the box, you know what right. I mean? And me and you, me and you always been great at that, you know, always thinking outside the box. You know, even as a rest, if I, even if I was a restaurant owner right now, you know, just to keep, you know, money coming in to help the uh, employees, I would do like a, a restaurant bond, you know, value like, you know, I'll buy a bond right now for a meal that's value at 100 and I'll, you know, that's value at $100 uh, dollars down the line, but I'll pay $50 for it now. Right. You know, and hold on to it. And once this passes, I'll go have an amazing dinner for $100. Yeah. Yeah, what what you're saying is exactly right. Is 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 be creative right now and uh, with with what you're doing. Be passionate and yeah. be creative. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's thinking outside the box, man. You know, and uh, and because we have to just keep looking out for each other, man. Right. We definitely have to keep looking out for each other. You know, and as New Yorkers, man, we get we we, we get through everything. You know, but it has to be a group effort. You know what I mean? And 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 people need to think outside the box. And not just think and think big picture because when restaurants shut down, that means the fresh fish is not coming in. That means fishermen are not going out fishing. You know, that means the land is not getting clean. That means the driver's not getting paid because he's not have he has nowhere to deliver. That means right. the laundry's not. You know, what I mean, it's just like it's it's a it's trickle down. Bigger. Sure, yeah, yeah. It, it really, it's, a, it's a huge domino effect, man. And. Again, I'm just trying to do my small little part, man. But yeah, you, yeah so, I mean, but your small little part goes a long way. Like I said, you know, I mean, like you think about it, our, our call right now, you know, it's because of your small little part. And uh, and we're and I'm looking at the feed, and people are coming in, and they're hearing this, and either they're supporting your cause and and sharing what you're doing, or my cause, or whatever it is, or they're thinking of one themselves. That's the whole trickle down to all of this too. Is that yeah. w- uh, what we want to do? I, and I, I feel like I could speak for you on this. What we want to do is 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 open up everybody's mind to the positive and to helping each other out and to being a community and being able to support each other locally and on a larger scale. The more we do this, the more people like you that are out there that are supporting their local, like you're doing it for artists and that's just fine. You don't have to go and, and do it for restaurants. You're an artist. That's what you need to do. Right. And if everybody supports their niche and, and, and yeah. expands, right. it, it's going to grow right. from there. I mean, yeah. You're absolutely right. You're a hundred percent. You know, if I was a restaurant tour guy, if I was a restaurant guy, I would think outside the box and how I just keep generating somewhat of an income. You know, um, right now my specialty is art, and and this is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And also too, I just want to give, I just want to let people know to all my major collectors and to other collectors, go out there and support, go and support living artists right now. You know what I mean? Let's put a pause on the major auctions, all these dead artists. Let's go and support living artists that really need it right now. It's a huge domino effect, you know what I mean? Right. That that one point two million dollar Picasso or that fifteen million dollar Rothko, let's put a pause on that and go support your local artist from Brooklyn, um, who hasn't sold a major painting yet, you know, and go spend maybe listen, I'm not saying go and buy a one point two million dollars for an unknown, right. but go spend a grand. Right. You know, go drop Go drop a grand on something like that. You know, I mean, go and support something like that. You know, and, I mean? so and go, it, just go out and do that. And, and like you and I talked about earlier, it goes a long way because there, there's so many different options. So you you can buy, you're, you're collecting all this art now, and then you could do a show later on where it's showcasing these people's art. So it's not just the 200 yeah. bucks. Yeah. It's yeah. also and that now they're I, part I, of I, your collection. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. This is there's, there's something bigger than this I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? And I, I'm going to continue to give back. So all the artwork I'm going to buy right now, you know, once this once this virus passes and where the city's back and going, I'm going to put a massive show and like sell this artwork back and give it back to the people and right. give it back to the artists. You That's know what beautiful. I mean? So it's this is just this is just a small step for a bigger picture. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think you're you're doing amazing work. You've always been doing amazing work. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to you on your artwork. I I I, I scroll through your collection. Um, I, I have my pieces that are my favorites that, that, I, that I've checked out, that I've thumbnailed. Um, you do some really beautiful, amazing art. I know that you don't want this to be about you, and I appreciate that. But I think people, if they can go to your Instagram, your Facebook, your, your website, I think you, you put out some really, really great stuff. And it's, and it's really cool because as, as a Haitian artist, it's not what I, what I would expect from a Haitian artist. Oh, the Monopoly yeah, pieces yeah, and all yeah, that. I know, I know. Listen, just because I'm Haitian, you know, I just, I'm just an artist who 
have to be Haitian, man. That's all, man. I got, I got my little. Yeah. I got, I got my little lady here, my little Haitian art. <laughs> I got my little Haitian art there. But, um, yeah, so can you just quickly give give everybody your handle so that if they do have an artist they want to share with you or yeah, post to you? So, so, listen, you can guys you can guys can follow me, DM me. Um, it's Guy Stanley Philos on Instagram. You guys can Google me. My full name, stuff will pop up. Uh, my website is www.philosstudios.com. And if you guys have a friend, who's an artist or know someone, know someone that is an artist, pass this on, man. You know what I mean? Because um, right now, like I said, as of now, I've already spent a thousand dollars and I can see right now my DM is starting to go up. So I'm going to keep doing this as much as possible, you know, and, and yeah. I think, I think everything that you're doing is beautiful. I mean, you're, 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 you're a true artist. And um, I, I really just appreciate the fact that you're doing this. And then that I, I, I got to tell everybody, I mean, I, I saw your post. I liked it. And then you hit me up right away. You were like, yo, what's up? Give me your number. Let's talk. And then we started talking and I said, let's do a podcast. And you were like, yeah, let's do it. And you just jump on things and you just do it. And I love that about you. You are a doer. You're, you're not a person that just sits back and thinks about it and procrastinates and, 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 and it doesn't happen. You are a doer. You're a true doer. Um, so, so big props to you for seriously. I mean, I, I really feel that way. I really think that this initiative is, is amazing. I hope it, it really becomes successful. And, and I do hope that you get your Rolex someday. I want to get a Rolex someday. Ah, I, I, dude, I, I know, do hope that you get going, it, but that's, going, that's going, going, going through this, there's more to life than, than this stuff like that. Yeah. We, yeah. Gotta, we gotta stick together and, you know, and, but follow and that positive it, light. Man. That's what it is. Yeah, it's all about exactly, fo- following man. that positive light and supporting yeah. our local community. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's all about it's all about supporting, you know, um, these, you know, small businesses and stuff like that, you know, and go out there. And again, man, if you, if you guys are art collectors right now, man, go out there and go, go and just go buy something small, man, you know, two, three hundred dollar painting. It's, that goes, that's going to go a long, 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 long way for people, man. Yeah. And it, and, and it just, and that right there again, just summarizing everything that we just talked about is just think outside of the box for your local community, yep. whether it's buying gift cards or buying artwork or, you know, just helping out all of your local community because by keeping your local community alive, uh, we, here, so here, another man. thought that I had, which was I was driving my daughters because I have two young daughters, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and I needed to get them out of the house and we can't go anywhere. So I said, let me take a cruise, right? So I'm taking a cruise and I'm going through these little towns and I'm thinking, if all of these little towns suffer and, and shut down, these are going to be ghost towns. So yeah. we got to keep our local communities alive. You know, New York City will bounce back for sure. But even these small little communities that we live in in upstate New York and outside of the New York area, you got to keep them alive. You got to support them, promote them, market them, buy from them. The artists, the same thing with the artists. Like if you think about Netflix, any show that you're watching on Netflix right now was made by an artist and yeah. they started somewhere. And so you got to support them and be there for them. And, and honestly, like what you're doing right now, it brings joy to me. It's bringing joy to people. And right now being happy and being joyful is what's going to help us get through a lot of this. So guy, thank you. I know you and I could keep going on for, for oh, hours. For sure, for sure, for um, sure, man. Keep doing, keep doing you, bro. If you, and know that if you guys did anything, bro, I'm a phone call away, man. I, I know you are, sir. Thank you very right. much, guy. I appreciate your time today. All right, cool, man. Right. So once again, I just want to say go and support your local artists. You know, um, let's just put the major auction on pause for one second. Go to your local, uh, you know, neighborhood. Find out who are painters. Go buy a small little painting, you know, because that, that, that little small painting is going to go and go far for these guys. Thank you, guy. Thank you so much All for right, what bro. you're doing out there. All right, man. All right everybody. Peace. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. You too, bro. Hey, everybody. I had to take a quick cut from all of that because um, I just wanted to wrap up my conversation with Guy Stanley Falosh. We uh, spoke a little bit off camera before I hung up with him. Um, but just coming back to the subject, you watched uh, me speak with uh, interview Guy on uh, my, my Instagram live channel. And um, you could watch that right there. You could watch the whole interview live right there. Um, but I just want to say, uh, help your local community um, and and just try to hold them up, support them. Because if you support them, it's going to help you. Because you don't. Let me let me give you another little thought in all of this. 
if the businesses in your local community all die out and, and your and your small town or your town or whatever it is, your street uh, loses all those businesses and loses all that income, your property value is going to go down. And even if you just rent, the, the, the area is going to change and you're going to be renting in an area that you don't necessarily want to live in. So support local, support your local area, go shopping in the local areas. It, it, I know you can't get outside of your house, but you can call the stores, leave them a message, give them your contact information and tell them that you want to buy a gift card. Tell them that you want to buy some merchandise from them, buy from them, buy local and, and support your local, promote them. Like even if you don't, ha- you don't have to buy things. You could also just support them by by going on Facebook, by going on Instagram, by going on LinkedIn, and you can just um, you can just share their posts, you can like their pages, you can speak about them. If you bought stuff from them in the past, you can recommend them and speak about the stuff that you bought. Share a story about your favorite restaurant, share a story about your favorite bar, your favorite store, your favorite boutique. Share stories help each other out in all of this and and please try not to hoard try not to buy everything off the shelves and if you have extra stuff laying around offer it to your friends and neighbors offer it to your family members especially the elderly offer it to them let them know that hey i have extra toilet paper i have extra supplies here if you need anything i'm a phone call away and it's yours let them know that and and that you're there for them we need to stick together we need to take this very seriously don't take this lightly. People are losing their jobs. Um, for, okay, the virus, okay. But people are losing their jobs. People are losing income. People are scared. People are worried. Be the shining light for people. Help people out. Um, support each other. Care for each other. Love each other. Motivate each other. Keep everybody positive. Look, even if you got to go in a corner and cry, go cry in your closet. Go be scared in your closet. But come out as a hero. Come out and be amazing for everybody else. Be the smile. Be the shining light for everybody else. You have to do it. And one last thing I want to do is also give a shout out to um, my family members. I want to give a shout out to uh, my uncle Thierry, who is a cardiologist fighting the front lines. My father, who's a for- Leonard Esposito, who's a physician's assistant, and and he's fighting the front lines. My sister, who just became a nurse, uh, Marie Noel Lang, and my my brother-in-law, who sells medical ex- equipment, Jimmy Lang. And so many other family members that I have out there that are in the medical profession right now that are out there fighting on the front lines. And, and I know we say that like it's a war. It's a war against a virus, but they are. Like I, my sister sends pictures of herself in, in all sorts of crazy gear that she never had to wear before. She's got her scrubs on. She's got her face mask on. She's got her gloves on. She's got her goggles on. She's got a face shield. Like she's she's she looks like she's in the movie Outbreak. It's it's crazy, and and she's got to work in that for I don't know eight, ten, twelve hours. I don't know what her shifts are. Sorry, um, but she's she's working in that. My my friend Dave uh, from basketball, Callie, who's who's out there. Same thing, and Fredo, who's who's doing this. You're dealing with the public. You're taking care of people. You know. Take care of your medical professionals is what I'm getting at here. Make sure that they're doing okay. Make sure that they're getting a meal. Make sure that they're they're resting. If you're married to one, if you're friends with one, if you know one, reach out to them, send them a text, tell them thank you. Just send them a text and say thank you. Just thank you. Just thank you. That's it. Just say thank you to them. That's all. Just say thank you and let them know that you appreciate them and, and let them know that you love them and that... Uh, and that you're there for them. Thank you, everybody, for watching the Michael Esposito podcast show. Uh, this is my second episode. Man, it's emotional. It's crazy. Um, I'm, I'm doing this for the local businesses. I'm doing this. Um, th- this this epidemic has lit a fire under my butt. And and uh, to, to be able to get out here, be the voice of, of the positive light for you, and to help you promote your business. If you have a business, if you're struggling, if you need help, reach out to me, DM me, send me a text, whatever it is. Let me know how I can help you, how I can market your business for you. I'm an insurance agent. Uh, if I could help you there, that's great. But if I can market your business for you, I'm really good at doing that. I will do it for you. I will share it with my networks and uh, to help you. I'm going to stop there. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone, and stay healthy. Bye.